Yeah, no, I, well, I don't have a, a list of questions, and psychologists are a little unusual compared to some other scientists, such as uh, you know, David Hilbert, uh, sometime around the, in the early 20th century, made a list of the questions that uh, mathematics was going to need to answer. And uh, lo and behold, many mathematicians worked on those questions. Uh, we don't start with that kind of list, and it's a good question why uh, we don't, but our, the questions that come to us come out of society. Uh, so our study of prejudice, for example, comes out of trying to deal with questions that are actually policy questions that leaders deal with and we think need to be informed by science. Uh, interestingly, prejudice was not a topic that I came to early in my career. My dissertation advisor was Gordon Allport, who is probably best known for his 1954 book, The Nature of Prejudice. But when he was my advisor in the early 1960s, he was not interested in prejudice, uh, so he didn't give it to me. I came to it eventually because the work on attitudes that I was doing in the mid-1990s produced a technique that turned out to have the potential of understanding prejudice in a new way. Uh, Mazarin was, had been working with me earlier, and this ended up shaping both of our research and produced a much more active collaboration than we actually had going prior to that point. Maybe you can pick it up from there. Yeah, so uh, what one sort of comment on something that Tony said. He said our questions come from society. I would modify that somewhat to say that we as social psychologists try to straddle two worlds. The world that sociology in one sense is concerned with, which is the societal part, but we're psychologists. And for me the fundamental question is the one that is captured by Steve Pinker's book title, How Does the Mind Work? And so if we're, we're interested in these large questions of prejudice and so on, but we're, we look at it by looking inside the human mind. And one of the things that has excited me is to think that we are at that moment in our science that an older set of sciences were in many generations ago when they first began to design techniques that would actually tell us the truth about material things, about the physical world. And I have become fascinated with the history of the development of the telescope in part because I think we're at that moment when we're developing techniques that allow us to take methods, turn them inward, and look at the universe between our ears and see that it is just as vast and expanding, malleable, adaptive, um, but that it has a certain um, way in which it can be tracked and measured that is immensely pleasing to people who want to be able to understand something as ephemeral as, as, as the mind. So, so, so to me, I would say the, the outside and the inside, and here's another phrase I'll use from another colleague, um, Dan Gilbert says, you know, looks, he says, there's stuff that happens on the sunny side of the epidermis, the stuff that's outside of our skin, and the stuff that lies inside, and I think it's that the, the, the porousness of that, that membrane uh, that is uh, really exciting. The personal stories that I was uh, a student uh, in, in India who had studied some psychology, but um, didn't find it very fascinating because the part of psychology that I was looking at was something called psychophysics and uh, uh, you know it was anyway so that didn't do very much for me I ended up in a Marxist university where I learned a lot about sociology but found its methods completely unappealing because there was nothing uh, about it that seemed tractable and that's when I discovered that there was a field called so experimental social psychology and some tribes in the United States were doing it, and I packed my bag, showed up at Ohio State, and I was sort of fortunate to end up in this particular lab, um, 
learning very general things about how to measure. And I would say that that was what I took away from my four years of graduate training. It, I wasn't clear what I was ever going to work on, but I had learned a set of methods that were going to allow me to be able to ask questions. So when you say, what are the questions now? The question that fascinates me is the question of how it is, how is it the case that well-intentioned people end up doing things that they never intend to do? And in a sense, this is a question that is one of the oldest ones in social psychology. It's the question that Stanley Milgram was interested in. Why is it you know, that reasonable, ordinary Germans did what they did? And I think we're asking a similar kind of question, but with a method and with methods that are just so much more superior than the way in which he was able to ask that question in the 60s. And so the, ultimately, the, the interest here is in looking at how can we begin to demonstrate that our behavior is out of line with our intention, and by demonstrating that, learn something about what goes on in our minds, but also therefore understanding how the brain and the mind work, but also being able to put in front of reasonable people this idea that their behavior is not in line with their very own intentions. So it's not that you aren't doing something that the law is telling you is the right thing. It's not that you aren't doing what your parents tell you is the right thing. You're probably not acting in line with your very own good intentions, and that's the point. I started working on questions like how does voluntary will work, uh, what is the self, and I worked into the topic of what, how the mind functions unconsciously, and actually surprised myself by discovering that visual stimuli that are flashed so briefly they can't be seen actually have an influence on behavior. I had no idea that that was true. And, but at, in doing that, I started to discover that the way we learn new things is by creating new methods. So I had created new methods for studying subliminal perception. And Mazarin and I were working on the idea that there were things going on in the mind that people weren't fully aware of. We were 